Would you like to play City Skylines without running out of money? Are you frustrated because your cities get choked with traffic? Hi, I'm Lee, and in this episode of More Money, Less Traffic, we'll show you how to glorify your grids with angled avenues and pretty parks. That's right, we're talking about city layout. Everyone wants to know the trick to city layout so they can build a realistic city. But there really isn't a trick. City layout is an art, where aesthetics, utility, and geometry all meet terrain. The most visually interesting cities blend form and function with such balance that it blurs the lines between engineering and art. Of course, not every planned city should be called art, and sometimes the best art comes from knowing when to throw away rules and discipline to achieve more organic and more interesting results. In the case of this city, I decided to start out with a rigid plan and break more and more of the rules over time, so long as it serves at least function or form. I'll walk you through my thought process in developing a plan for our new city, and hopefully this will give you some ideas on how to develop plans for your own cities. I decided to start with the Seven Lakes map, which comes with the Mass Transit DLC, which I highly recommend, by the way. Whenever I scope out a map, I like to make a functional assessment of the terrain first. I like to live by a simple principle in everything I do in City Skylines. Let the terrain be your guide. So if we zoom out for a wider view, what do we see that would affect the function of a city we might build? First, we see that there are indeed seven lakes on this map. This will provide a lot of waterfront for our new city, which will be fantastic for a land value. Another thing we see about the lakes is that almost all of them nearly connect to another lake. For the water, that means we could join each lake with canals if we wanted to, which might be pretty cool for a ferry system. More importantly, we only have narrow strips of land between many lakes on which to build roads. Unless we build expensive bridges or tunnels, we will need these narrow strips of land to connect neighborhoods in our city by road and rail. If we don't pay attention to how our city is laid out over the long run, we could create some serious traffic bottlenecks on the roads that connect across these narrow strips. Next, let's look at the profile of the land. Are there any mountains or hills, or is the terrain rather flat? On this map, we don't see much variation until we get far from our starting square out by these mountains way out here. In fact, it seems like with the exception of this area just over here by the lake, most of this map is almost completely flat. This means a couple of things for us. First, we can lay things out pretty much however we want. Second, there won't really be a part of our city that will sit on a hill with more prominence than the rest of our city, uh, except for maybe this slightly raised area over here. So the tallest buildings in our city will usually be the most prominent things on our skyline. So the lakes by far are the dominating geographical feature for this map. This is very different from most of the cities I've built in city skylines. Even our first More Money Less Traffic series used a map of the river, as well as a lot of hills and valleys. The flat terrain on this map will definitely pose a challenge for me making the city visually interesting. Now my first thought here is how cool would it be to have a city center here, with roads spoking out towards a small strip of land between lakes. These would form a nice skeleton of main roads for our city, serving the function of helping our sims get around the lakes, and they would also create interesting angles, even if we used a grid for the side streets. Now our first More Money Less Traffic series relied heavily on a grid too, but since the terrain is so flat, I thought it would be appropriate again here. The grid won't be anywhere near as strict in this series, since the lakes and the angles of our main streets will definitely break it up. I think it'll be helpful, too, to use a grid in showing the ways we can make them interesting and not just efficient, and in getting better sense of how to set things up like transit routes and highway interchanges. After playing around with this map for a while, I stumbled onto some pretty cool ideas that led me to this plan. But before I show it off, I want to share what I learned about real-life city grids and angles that guided me. Now the question of grid sizing comes up frequently, so I did some research to translate the block sizes of several real-life cities with a grid plan to cities skylines for comparison. For those of you unfamiliar with North American city terminology, a block is the area enclosed by four streets. So a neighbor can be said to live on the same block while your grandma lives on the next one over. Many city dwellers also measure distance in blocks, since the distance between intersections, at least in one direction, tends to be uniform in most cities. So the nearest corner store may be around the same block, while the public library is three blocks north and one block east. Even rural areas of the United States have this concept of a country block, since much of the country was surveyed into a huge checkerboard of one square mile sections that usually are bordered by roads. 
Since a block is usually a mile long though, people in rural areas measure distance in miles rather than blocks like big city dwellers. Probably the most famous grid plan in the world belongs to the borough of Manhattan in New York City. The grid really starts to kick in north of Houston Street at 1st Street with another numbered street every 264 feet, all the way up to 193rd Street, about 10 miles away near the tip of Manhattan Island. Avenues, however, which run north and south, are spaced at longer and more variable distances. On the east side, they're anywhere from 460 to 650 feet apart if we count Lexington and Madison Avenues, while the west side is mostly spaced 800 feet apart, with the distance between 5th and 6th Avenues being a particularly long 920 feet. What's cool about Manhattan streets are that they're spaced exactly 1 20th of a mile apart. So 20 blocks along one of the avenues is exactly a mile. New York City blocks work out really well for a city's skylines, since streets are almost exactly 10 units apart, with avenues varying from about 18 to 35 units apart. This is a very efficient grid pattern in the game, since there's no space wasted in the center of a block with standard vanilla growable buildings. Much of the rest of the United States uses a block size that is very similar to Chicago's, since most of the United States, west of the Appalachian Mountains, was surveyed into one mile by one mile squares called sections, it could easily be divided in half a few times to create 330 foot by 660 foot city blocks, which gives 16 blocks by 8 blocks per mile. This pattern was so easy to survey that many cities across the western United States use the exact same grid pattern. These blocks work out to about 13 by 25 units in city skylines which leaves plenty of room for special buildings and parks, but weighs quite a bit of space for growable buildings. Much of downtown San Francisco and Denver use 330 foot by 480 foot city blocks, which gives exactly 16 blocks by 11 blocks per mile, or about 13 by 18 units in city skylines. Houston, along with a huge number of other cities in the western United States, has Chicago's blocks for 330 foot square blocks, or 13 by 13 units in city skylines. While Seattle halves San Francisco's blocks into 320 foot by 240 foot blocks, or 9 by 12 units. Downtown Portland has even smaller blocks of 200 feet, which gets us into old world numbers and city skylines block sizes of 8 by 8 units. Speaking of the old world, I calculated the block size of Barcelona's Aixample district to be about 372 feet square, or about 14 by 14 units in city skylines. In most cases, I like to work with block sizes that are at least 10 by 10 units, which is just short of 264 feet or 1 20th of a mile. And in this city, I think I'm going to go easy on myself and use 12 by 12 unit block sizes, which are really close to 330 feet long or 1 16th of a mile. Now let's talk about angles. In working out my grid plans with angles, I like my blocks to work out in whole numbers so I don't have any weird gaps between buildings. An easy way to do this is with Pythagorean triples. If you learn much in the way of algebra, it's likely you've come across the Pythagorean theorem, which states that for any right triangle, the squares of two legs from the right angle will equal the square of the hypotenuse, or this long segment of the right triangle. Pythagorean triples are right triangles where both legs and the hypotenuse are all whole numbers. A grid that spaces and angles streets appropriately to take advantage of Pythagorean triples will never have any of these weird gaps between buildings. For example, 3, 4, 5 right triangles are the smallest Pythagorean triple. Blocks that are 3 to 5 units long really aren't practical in city skylines though, so we can double that ratio and use 6, 8, 10 or 9, 12, 15 and get the same result in a more practical size. Another useful Pythagorean triple is the 5, 12, 13 right triangle. We can use 10 by 12 blocks, 10 by 24 or 12 by 20 unit blocks to take advantage of these in city skylines. A ratio I stumbled across experimenting with layouts for our new city is almost a Pythagorean triple, or at least it's close enough for city skylines. It's 3 to 5 to 5.83 something. <laughs> uh, the hypotenuse here really isn't important yet, so just pay attention to the 3 to 5 ratio of the legs. Since we're using 12 by 12 unit block sizes, we can multiply the long leg, 5, by 2.4 to get exactly 12. If we multiply all the numbers by 2.4, we get a ratio of 7.2 to 12 to 13.99 something. The hypotenuse is close enough to 14 here that City Skylines just gives us a perfect set of squares all along. Pretty cool so far, right? What makes this even better is that the angle these create is just over 59 degrees and just under 31 degrees. You can use this 3 to 5 ratio to create a near perfect Y intersection and have it all fit in with a near perfect grid. 
All you need to do to take advantage of this is to draw a street that reaches exactly five units away and angled by exactly three units, which is easy to set up on vanilla city skylines, even on console. In our city, we're definitely taking advantage of this discovery since it follows the shoreline of a couple of our lakes so magnificently, allowing us to take full advantage of our real estate. The only bummer about our 59 degree angled streets is that they'll be angled with our east-west streets at about 31 degrees, which is too sharp of an intersection angle unless we want to use mods like Fine Road Anarchy. Not to worry though, I found workarounds that will add curves to our city and make the layout that much more visually interesting. Hopefully this quick math lesson gives you some ideas of how to angle your streets very neatly within a grid, should you choose to use one. Now let's check out the initial plan for our new city. By a sort of happy accident, I determined a base angle for my grid with this north-south street, which I call Main Avenue. The grid is many degrees askew of true north, but it allows me to thread my other main streets exactly where I want them, so I'm okay with it. Now two of my main streets run square to Main Avenue, at least mostly. Broadway here to the east, and Prospect Avenue up here to the west. Park Avenue nearly runs due east and west at a 59 degree angle to Main Avenue, using that 7.2 to 12 to 14 ratio that works out really well up here and up here. Finally, I have another Main Street, Marcus Street, running parallel to Main Avenue seven blocks away. That will provide access across this strip of land right here. Since we now have the Park Life DLC, I plan to turn these triangle areas here into parks. The one here at the city center I think will be called Bowtie, and we have a smaller Bowtie over here that we could blend with the lakefront park up here. We could develop extensive parks along each of these store lines, or we could develop super expensive properties. This will definitely be interesting. Now the beginning of this series will not use mods, only DLCs that are available from Colossal Order and Paradox. But I've used a couple of mods here so I could show how I plan to extend some of the main streets as I unlock more city squares, and so we can see the edges of the map. First, we notice that there's only one highway connection out of the city to the south. And we have access to rail over here to the east. A nice bonus we discover if we scroll to the north is that our lake up here actually becomes a river, which allows for outside harbor connections. So in order to take advantage of our outside connections, I've decided that our initial industrial area will be over here, on the east side of our city plan, and beyond once we buy the adjacent city squares. We can bring a rail connection right down here to the east without encroaching on the planned part of our city. We'll also extend rails and roads up to the north to connect our industry to a port. You probably noticed that I haven't included the highway in my city plan, and there's a reason for this. Highways are an exciting dimension of the game. However, I want to demonstrate that we don't need to rely on highways to handle traffic, even industrial traffic. If anything, not building highways through our city center should actually improve traffic flow through our city. So to start out, I'm only going to connect the nearest side streets to the highway. As our city grows outward, I intend to cut this highway back to open this land up and to distribute its traffic to the main roads down here. Will we build more highways if our city needs it? Of course. But since most cities started without highways and build up more around water and rail connections initially, I wanted to give this city a chance to build up without the effects of highways too. So are you excited to get started? So am I. In our next episode of More Money Less Traffic, we'll put our city plan into action. We'll build our first three city services and get our first sims to move in. We'll do all of it using only the vanilla game and DLCs so purists and console players can follow along too. So don't miss out, subscribe. Thanks for watching.